today we are going to start with a new topic in the kingdom of anemia that we are going to start with a new phylum. In the previous session we have discussed about the phylum Mollusca and its classification and also we have discussed certain examples. Now today we will start with the another phylum that is phylum Echinodermida. Okay. So the next phylum is the phylum Echinodermida. So here in this phylum we will be talking about the animals which are most probably aquatic in their habitat. Okay. So they are found in the aquatic habitat and we will discuss about their general characteristic feature that is what type of body organization they have, what type of reproductions they exhibit, whether they have the true body cavity, okay, whether they have what type of organ system or, or what type of level of organization they have. Okay. So all these uh, things we are going to discuss here. So we will start with the now uh, basic introduction and then we will write down the general characteristic features of the phylum Echinodermata. Okay. So, Jacob Klein, Jacob Klein named, named the organisms, named the organisms. Name the organisms in the phylum Echinodermata. Okay, so Kelvin Jacob or the Jacob Klein, Klein, sorry, Klein was the one who has named the organisms in the phylum Echinodermata. Next, all animals are are marine. Okay, so whatever animals which are found under this phylum are marine in their habitat. Okay, and and are benthic. Benthic in the sense, see this is the in a very important characteristic feature that we have discussed in the very very beginning that is when we have discussed the habitat, we have discussed two types of habitat, aquatic and terrestrial. In aquatic again we have studied three different types, free floating, nectans and benthic. So the organism which are found at the boat, bottom of the ocean, those animals are referred as the benthic one. So the animals which are found in this phylum Echinodermata, they love to grow. It at the bottom of the ocean. Okay, so they love to grow at bottom of the ocean, and they show the locomotory movements also. Okay, so they move from one place to another place. Okay, so this is about the introduction. Let's go with the general characteristic features. General characters. Okay, so what will be the general characters over here? As we have discussed about the habitat itself, okay. Now, let us discuss about the body shape. So, body shape, body shape is variable. Variable in the sense they may have different types of uh, shape of the body, like uh, we can say, such as, such as. Star like, star like that is starfish, okay. Then cylindrical, cylindrical, then melon like, melon like, okay. Then uh, disc like. Then flower like flower, flower like, okay. Then etc. So, these are the different shapes which can be seen in these animals, okay. So, they have the star like shape which can be seen in case of starfish, then they have cylindrical body, melon like body, 
disc shape okay disc like then flower like okay so such a arrangement or the such different shapes can be seen in the phylum echinoderms or the animals which are found in the final phylum echinoderm okay then next the body lacks the body lacks head okay so head is a uh, is not been developed in case of these animals okay the next the body lacks body lacks sorry body lacks segments on the surface segments on the surface okay then they show they show bilateral symmetry bilateral symmetry okay they show bilateral symmetry only in the larval stage only in the larval stage larval stage so here you can see they exhibit the bilateral symmetry okay now what is meant by bilateral symmetry one student also asked me during doubt session difference between bilateral and radial symmetry i would like to tell you see suppose this is the body of a human okay i am drawing here it is a suppose it is a body of a human consisting of two pairs of limbs okay if we pass a plane through the center of the body okay the body will be divided into two identical equal half that is called bilateral symmetry remember this and suppose the body of the organism is such in such a way okay then or it is a disc like or flat then we can pass many planes through the center of the body which will divide the body into many identical equal halves okay such a type of symmetry is referred as the radial symmetry okay so here in case of these animals in the larval stage they have the bilateral symmetry as they will grow into adult they will have the radial type of symmetry and in the very beginning also when we were discussing the symmetry i have told you the symmetrical animals are of three types universal radial and bilateral in radial also we have discussed about the pentamerous hexamerous okay right tetramerous pentamerous hexamerous these three different types okay so when we talk about the adult stage in these animals we can see the pentamerous type of symmetry okay what how it is formed in case of starfish it has the five different arms and these five different arms can divide the body into five parts that means that five arms are showing the radial symmetry that is pentamerous in some animals like sea cucumber we can see hexamerous okay in some animals like jellyfish we can also see the tetramerous type of symmetry okay so these are the different types of symmetry when we pass the plane through the center of the body okay i hope you are getting this now next and this is the larval stage and and radial symmetry radial symmetry radial symmetry like pentamerous at adult stage adult stage okay so radial symmetry is seen in adult stage and most probably pentamerous if we talk about the starfish okay so that is pentamerous so these are the few points again we will discuss about more general characteristics okay so i'll rub this you can pause the video and note down these points the next next characteristic feature echinoderms are or these are
ट्रिप्लोप्लास्ट ट्रिप्लोब्लास्टिक ट्रिप्लोब्लास्टिक एनिमल्स दैट मींस दे कंसिस्ट ऑफ थ्री जर्मिनल लेयर्स एक्टोडम मिजोडम एंड द एंडोडम दैट इज ट्रिप्लोब्लास्टिक एंड एंड हैव organ system level of organization organ system level of organization so there is a presence of different organ systems okay which are responsible for regulating various metabolic as well as physiological activities within the body of the echinoderms so what we are calling they are having the organ system level of organization okay the next skin has skin has spines so the skin surface is spiny okay the next between which between which between which pincer like Pincer-like structures called called pedicellariae. Pedicellariae. Okay, and. endoskeleton and endoskeleton made up of made up of calcareous plate calcareous plate okay so that is called ossicles now here you can see skin has the spines on its surface between which pincer like structures are present okay and this pincer like sub, uh, structures are called pedicellariae okay and it also has the endoskeleton which is made up of a calcareous plate calcareous in the sense it is composed of the calcium carbonate okay so that is the endoskeleton the next minute pedicellariae minute pedicellariae keeps the body surface keeps the body surface body surface free from free from debris okay so basically they are found at the uh, bottom of the ocean okay their body may be having minute structures okay so these minute structures they are responsible for uh, keeping body surface free from the debris now debris may be any kind of particles over there okay it may be the cell debris or it can be the other debris which are formed on their body okay so which will be freed with the help of such a body surface which has the pedicellariae the next they have they have trucellum that is they have true body cavity okay trucellum and are enterocelic enterocelic okay so what is mean by enterocelic See in the very beginning while discussing the body cavity, we have discussed it. Okay, cisocele and the enterocele. So enterocele is that where the body is developed from the uh, what we say blastula. Okay, then blastula will develop into the germinal layers. Okay, and uh, there will be formation of the uh, like uh, we have two different terms over here. Okay, if the mouth part is formed first, if the anus part is formed first. Okay, so 
in such a way the development takes place in case of these animals okay the next they have they have water vascular water vascular water vascular system okay which is unique which is unique in echinoderms in echinoderms which is which is water filled water filled which is water filled okay cavity or water filled yes water filled ambulacral okay that is the cavity over here so they have the water vascular system see the uh, circulation in these animals takes place with the help of water as they are found within the water okay so they have the water filled ambulacral or the water filled with cavities okay so or which can also be referred as the water vascular system water vascular system okay so these are few more characters again the next we are going to move to the next point the next this water vascular system consisting of perforated plates okay this water vascular system consist of consist of consist of perforated plates perforated plates okay which are called as called as madreporite madreporite okay and this madreporite helps in locomotion okay so this water vascular system consists of perforated plates which help in the locomotion okay then also helps in the capturing and transport of the food material okay so this madreporite helps in the locomotion that means help in movement of the body then also help in the uh, capturing of the food as well as uh, transport of the food material to the different parts okay so here these are the some characteristic feature see these characters are definitely new to you but when we we'll discuss about the diagram okay we can also come with this characteristic features okay so i'll rub this you can pause the video and note down these points the next respiration what type of respiration can be seen or how respiration is taking place in these animals so respiration is through respiration is through the body surface the body surface okay so respiration is through body surface called called dermal dermal branchi okay which are also referred as a dermal gills okay you can write in bracket gills as i told you branchial type of uh, respiration is through the gills okay the next digestive tract digestive tract digestive tract is made up of 
is made up of is made of mouth okay and digestive uh, mouth and ends with ends with anus okay so the digestive tract consists of mouth that is the anterior part and the posterior part that is the anus okay so the mouth is so the mouth is on lower part lower part and anus is at and <coughs> upper part so if we look after the starfish the bottom part of the starfish consists of the mouth and the upper part of the or the dorsal part of the a starfish consists of the anus okay so such a arrangement can be seen in case of the starfish or in case of the echinoderms okay the next circulation system circulation system is open type open type okay and reduced and reduced with no heart with no heart okay or any pumping organ or any pumping organ okay so the circulatory system is open type in case of this animals which is reduced and why because they don't have the pumping organ okay to regulate this circulation okay so as we know the circulatory system which is open type that means arteries will uh, carry the circul circulating uh, fluid into direct directly into the sinuses okay so, so there will be no supplement of the circulating fluid within the body through the blood vessels the next okay so the next point is there is no there is there is no specific specific excretory there is no specific excretory system okay so this organism do not have the specific excretory system okay and and the nitrogenous and the nitrogenous waste produced produced by the cells by the cells is ammonia okay is ammonia which is which is diffused out the body is diffused out the body okay through surface or through body surface so see the nitrogenous waste material which is been formed within the Uh, such organisms is in the form of ammonia and which is being secreted by the diffusion through the body surface okay so here as i told you the anus it is situated or it is located on the upper part of the body so it is also found on the body it can also be said as the on the body surface so what the nitrogenous waste material will be excreted outside with the help of diffusion process okay so the next the nervous system nervous system is simple is simple 
with less developed organ with less developed organs okay so it consists of a nerve ring okay there will be presence of a nerve ring when we discuss the structure at that time i'll show you what is the nerve ring actually okay so in this organism as they don't have the head develop right so there is not development of the brain so they consist of a nerve ring which is acting as a nervous system in this animals okay so and uh, this sorry less developed organ and have and have nerve ring okay and to this nerve ring the radial uh, nerve fibers will be attached suppose uh, in the starfish such type of nerve ring is there okay so as the body of the starfish is the pentamerous okay so in this way the nerve ring can be seen and to this nerve ring the nerve fibers will be there okay so this nerve fibers they are responsible for regulating the nerve impulses so we can see the starfish it is having five arms and this five arms shows the movement that movement or uh, any kind of uh, sensible movement how it is sensed with the help of such nerve endings okay so the nerve fibers which are attached to this nerve ring this is a nerve ring we will discuss about it when we discuss the structure again the next okay they lack they lack brain so brain is not developed in them instead of brain they consist of a small nervous system in the form of ring structure okay so this is about the certain general characteristic feature of the uh, phylum echinodermata now let's see the structure of the animals which are found in the phylum echinodermata okay so as you can see the example that is the starfish the diagram you can see here which consists of few feet consists of ambulacular uh, uh, growth okay which help in the movement then uh, consists of marginal spines that is uh, which consists of the spines on the surface itself then madreporite which help in the water vascular uh, vascular system it consists of a central disc to which the arms are attached and here there is a see here itself you can see the nerve ring presence of the nerve ring okay So in this way, nerve ring is present over here, and this nerve ring it is attached with certain nerve fibers which uh, are formed within this ambulacral groove, okay, which help in the movement. Then the next from the dorsal part we can see the anus, from the ventral part we can see the mouth, which is present over the central disc. So at dorsal means pitchable part, okay, and at ventral means the part which is lower, okay. So from that mouth can be seen. okay so this is about the uh, what we say starfish some other examples under echinoderms are like brittle star okay apart from brittle star again we have the example like feather star is also there so instead of this brittle uh, see you can see the spines are present instead of spines there will be for, uh, formation of the feather like structure you know feather birds have the feathers right so such feathers are present over here so such a arrangement is seen in case of brittle star as well as feather star This is the type of starfish itself. Okay, so this is the echinod examples of the phylum echinoderms. Again, later further we are going to see the some few characteristic feature and we'll classify these organisms. Okay, or the phylum echinoderm. So let's move to the some more general features. Okay, so in echinoderms or echinoderms have echino. Dogs have have male and male and female sexes separately. Okay, so male and female are separate in case of this echinoderms. The next fertilization. fertilization this external fertilization is external 
after sexual mating so fertilization uh, can be seen external in case of echinoderms okay the next development is indirect indirect in the sense it will undergo metamorphosis undergoes metamorphosis indirect okay the next early embryonic development early embryonic embryonic development okay Includes includes the enterocenomic condition. Enterocenomic condition. That means after fertilization or uh, before metamorphosis. Okay, before formation of larva, it will. Undergo certain developmental stages means from uh, see when the male and female gamete they fuse as these are single uh, or the haploid set of nuclei will be fused together to form a diploid organ. Or the diploid organism that is zygote. This zygote uh, is capable of uh, showing the what we say totipotency ability. That means they will start to regenerate. They will form multiply. Okay, and after multiplication there will be formation of a blastula. Okay. the blastula that is uh, responsible for development of the body cavity that is either uh, the anus will be formed first or the mouth will be formed first okay so that is the uh, deuterostomes okay or the protostomes right so deuterostomes in the sense uh, the animals which are developed from the uh, first anus will be developed and the then mouth will be developed so in this category uh, or ichnoderms can be considered in this category okay So enterocelomic condition is there where the entire body plan okay will be developed. So next, these are the certain more extra characteristic feature of the phylum Echinoderm. Now let's see the classification of the phylum Echinodermata. Okay, so we'll classify the phylum Echinodermata. classes of the phylum echinodermata okay we'll write this so the classification of classification of echinodermata see the classification so classification means the phylum echinodermata has been classified into five different classes let's see the first class okay the first class is the holo turodia okay holo turodia then second phylum is the echinodia Fourth class, Astroidea. And the fifth class is the 
Ma fino a venire. So these are the five different classes. Okay, which can be seen under classification of Echinoderm. So we will start with the first class that is Holothoridia. Okay. So here let's see the characteristic feature of this Holothoridia. Uh, body forms or the body form is long and cylindrical. Okay. So the body structure is long and it is cylindrical. Then arms are absent. Arms are absent. Okay. Then larva is called see larva in case of such uh, animals is called auricularia auricularia okay so the pronunciations are a bit difficult to uh, pronounce okay but they are uh, if you revise it it will be familiar for you the next respiration respiration is by local local respiration or the clocal okay that is the organ for respiration cloaca generally cloaca is uh, uh, like an organ which can be acting as an respiratory organ in many animals okay which is resembling to the coxal gland the next example example is the sea cucumber sea cucumber okay example is the sea cucumber so this is about the class holothoridia okay the next and uh, next that is second number Echinoidea, second class. Echinoidea. Okay, so let's see the characteristic feature of the Echinoidea. Body is, body is globular. Body is globular or disc like. Okay, body is globular or disc like. Then next, arms are absent. Arms are absent. The next, larva is called. Larva is called. This larva of Echinoidea, that is classic Echinoidea, is called the. Kynoplutius. Kynoplutius. Okay, that is the larval name of the class Echinodia. The next respiration is through gills. Respiration is through or respiration is by. Peristomial, peristomial gills. Okay, so that is the central part of the body. Like central disc is consist of the peristomial gills, which are used for respiration. The next mouth has mouth has biting. And chewing teeth, biting and chewing teeth, 
ini fit. Oke. Okay. And uh, the apparatus which is formed by this biting and chewing teeth is also referred as the is also referred as the Aristotle's lantern. Aristotle's lantern. Okay. So the biting and chewing teeth it is a, acting as an apparatus in this, and that apparatus is called as the Aristotle's lantern. So next. Okay. And uh, number of teeth are found. That is, we have the five. Okay. Number of teeth in this animals. And the example is sea urchin. Sea urchin. Okay. For diagrams, I can. I will give you the diagram. Okay. After the lecture. So I will give the pictures of the diagram that you have to draw in your notebook. Okay. The next another class. That is third class. That is called crinoidea or crinoidea. So, in this class, the body of animals, okay, is fixed like plants. So, the body of animals is fixed like plants. Okay, fixed like plants. Siri, okay, with Siri, Siri, Siri or the Siri are the structures which are present on the plant or the body surface, which help in the like uh, which are fixed within that place, particular place. Okay, the next arms are numerous. Arms are numerous. Okay. And branch. So it is quite similar to the plants itself. Okay, plants they are also consisting of the roots. So here the structure of root is similar to the cirri. Okay, and they have different branches. Okay, here we can consider the arms with the branches. The next larva is called larva is called. Dolio, dolio laria, dolio laria. Okay, so that is the name of the larva that is called dolio laria. Okay, an example, example is enteron, enteron, which is commonly referred as sea lily. Okay, sea lily, and uh, on the surface of the sea lily, we can see there will be formation of the spines. Okay, then the next uh, class, that is fourth class, Astroidea. Okay, so very few characteristics are there of this classes. Okay, as uh, they are having very common characteristic feature, which are included in general characteristic. Okay, of the phylum Echinodermata. Okay, so four class is Asteroidea. Okay, so here body form here body form is flat. star like body form is flat and star like the next arms are arms are five comma thick comma 
short and lacks central disk. Central disk. So here you can see the body form is flat and star like. Okay. And arms are five thick, short, and which lacks the central disk. In the star which we have seen the central disk is present. But here the central disk is absent. Okay. Larva. Larva is called bipinaria. Bipinaria. Comma. Diapluria. Or yes, diaplura. Okay. That is the larval names. So these are the larval found basically, which are found in the class Astroidea. Okay. They have five arms. They are similar to the starfish, but they lack the central disc. Okay. And the larval stage after the fertilization, which are formed. Okay. They are the bipinaria type and the diaplura type. Okay. The next the respiration is by respiration. Is by is by thermal branchy thermal branchy that is the gills which are present on the skin okay skin surface that is called thermal branchy uh, okay an example starfish okay starfish so. This uh, it is also the example of starfish which is lacking the central disc. So this is about the class Astroidea. Then the last class of this phylum Echinodermata is the Aphiroidea. Okay, it's the Aphiroidea. That is fifth class. Let's see the general characteristics of the Ophiroidea. That is, body forms or the body form is body form is flat and body form is flat and star-like. Body form is flat and star-like. The next arms are five. Arms are five. Okay, arms are five. Comma thin, long, and brittle. And Greater. So, what example come in our mind? That is, it is the example of uh, or the example under this uh, class is the brittle star as we have seen in the diagram itself. Okay. So, the arms are five, thin, long, and brittle. They are consisting of the spines on the surface. Okay. The next, the larva is or the larval form is. Ophiopluteus. Ophiopluteus. That is the name of the larval stage which is formed in the brittle star. Okay. Then the respiration. Respiration is by. Is by. Genital bursae. Okay, genital bursae. So these are the structure which are responsible for showing the respiration. The next example, brittle star. Brittle star. Okay. So, students, this is about the class or the phylum 
echinodermata here we have discussed about many characteristic features of the phylum echinodermata in this we have discussed about the habitat okay in this we have discussed about the body shape then in this we have also discussed about the water vascular system okay and uh, the structures which are been found in this organisms okay and after that we have also discussed the five different classes of phylum echinodermata okay i hope you have understood this okay you have to write all these points within your notebook okay make a clear notes clear and neat notes okay and uh, i'll also give some more examples okay on to the group i'll send on to the group like uh, how different classes with their picture okay so thank you